and colleague Kim and developing a blockchain platform in Grandex. Um, in this presentation, I will talk about how we extended Ethereum's account and tension borders in Clayton. Um, have you ever heard about uh, Clayton before? Please raise your hand. Okay, yeah, many of you. Thank you. Uh, I will talk about first is uh, what Clayton is. Uh, this is a blockchain platform built by Grandex. Uh, Grandex is uh, the blockchain subsidiary of uh, Kakao, which is uh, Korea's uh, largest mobile platform. Kakao Talk is uh, one of the Kakao service, and this is a uh, number one messenger service in South Korea. It has uh, more than 96% of user penetration. So this is very big uh, services in Korea. And Clint is proved from Go Ethereum, so this is the Ethereum-based project, and we launched mainnet uh, in June this year. As you can see on the left-hand side, uh, Clint is an open source project, so you can uh, check out uh, source code use, uh, via this uh, github.com GitHub and uh, you can get some documentations about Clayton via docs.clayton.com uh, We are up to uh, support enterprise-grade services as a blockchain platform. Uh, in this presentation, I will talk about uh, high usability. So there are some uh, usability limitations. First and the foremost one is immutable private key. Uh, when you create a key pair in Ethereum, the Ethereum address is determined. So if you create another key pair, it means you create another Ethereum account. Uh, so what if your private key exposed accidentally? Only you can do is to create another account. But it uh, incurs more uh, additional problems. So you should tell a new address to your friend to make sure that uh, those your friend do not send uh, the Ether to uh, the old address. In addition, you should transfer your all assets of the old addresses to, to the new address if you use any decentralized applications. If you, lose, uh, if you expose your private key accidentally once again, you should follow this process again. So it's a very uh, inconvenient and unexpected user experiences. Uh, let's uh, compare to the bank account. You can think of an Ethereum address as a bank account number. Also, you can think of an uh, Ethereum private key as a password of your bank account. What if you uh, expose your password? Only you need to do is uh, just change your password. You don't need to create a uh, bank account. Right? So this limit of private key uh, incurs much more um, uh, user limitation. Um, the second thing is uh, lack of multi significance. If you increase your uh, account security, you should you can use uh, multi sig mechanism, but uh, on Ethereum you cannot use multi sig mechanism on the platform itself. You should create a multi sig uh, smart contract, and you should know how to use it. So this is very uh, this is very inconvenient. So it should be better if we uh, have multi sig mechanism on the platform level. And third one is uh, Ethereum does not have. Uh, type information for uh, accounts and transactions. So it is very hard to extend new functionalities. And first one is uh, you should, uh, um, there's no uh, transaction type, so you should, uh, there's some uh, necessary fields should be included in the transaction. For example, think about uh, value transfer. Uh, if you transfer value, uh, if you transfer some ether to your friends, uh, you, you don't need to set the uh, data field but it should be always because there's a single transaction form. And there's a uh, no field de fee delegation mechanism. Uh, fee delegation means that uh, you can pay transaction fee instead of a sender. There's no such uh, thing is implemented on Ethereum. So let's think, think about uh, th these uh, scenario scenarios. First one is what if you as a user should pay whenever you tweet. This is very uncommon, right? But uh, all, the, all the decentralized application requires you to pay some transaction fee. The second one is, what if you, as a software developer, um, service de uh, developer, want to give users free trial period? This is very common service uh, uh, strategies, but 
it is not possible on the platform level on Ethereum. So if you provide hidden legacy mechanism on the platform level, those scenarios will be solved very easily. So let's talk, talk about what we uh, design new features of Clinton. First, we uh, provide a change of private key. To do this, you can change your private key if you expose your private key once, then you can uh, use your account number yeah, continuously. And also, we support multiple private key on the platform level, so you don't need to know how to create and how to use a smart contract for the participant mechanism. And also, we found that uh, there are several rules in an account when you design this account model, so you can uh, assign separate, uh, you can assign keys to each role, and you can uh, control the account more specifically. And in terms of uh, transition model, uh, you can uh, we provide multiple transition types so that uh, you can easily extend any features on the transition type, or so you can remove some unnecessary fields. And also we provide key delegation mechanism on the uh, transition model. But one thing I want to uh, emphasize is that we preserve compatibility with Ethereum, which means Ethereum transactions can be executed on Clayton without any problem. So for those extensions, we uh, use common techniques. First one is introduce time. So we design three data structures, account, account key, and transaction. So for those or uh, data structures, we have type information. And we use double encoding mechanism. So we encode the data at first, then uh, the, the encoded data with, uh, is included once again with uh, type information. So when we decode this, when we decode this kind of data structure, we first decode type information, and then we decode once again uh, based on the type information. So let's talk about a little bit more uh, about account model. In Ethereum, there's a single account type here, so there's no type information. And we have, you can see we have four fields here. But Ethereum has, uh, uh, it distinguishes two account types, uh, smart contract accounts and uh, externally owned accounts, or EOA. But uh, as of September of this year, we found that more than 80% uh, of Ethereum accounts are EOAs. Uh, in EOAs, there is no information required for a uh, root and code hash. So for EOAs, these are uh, search overheads. So to remove this kind of uh, search overhead, we, uh, we design uh, account model in the uh, account type. So we have two account types here. Uh, and you can see in the EOA, there's no root and code hash field. So we can reduce uh, search cost. Uh, and additionally, we have a key field, as you can see here. And this account key field also has uh, type information. So key field can be configurable on of those four key types. The uh, last key type is, uh, works for like an Ethereum account, which has no key. This is provided for uh, compatibility with Ethereum. And also you can set a uh, public key in the key field. In this case, uh, transactions of this account uh, can be signed by the private key that corresponds to this uh, public key. So you can change any uh, keys attached to the account. So uh, we provide multi-signal mechanism on the platform itself, so you can set multiple public keys into this key field. The last one I want to talk about is uh, workers' keys. We have found three roles. First one is transaction, and second one is account update, and the last one is payer. Keys for a transaction, keys for the transaction role are used to uh, used for um, value transfer, smart contract deploy, and smart contract execution. And keys for the account update role is used to update uh, account key. And the last one, fee payer role is uh, used to um, change the fee only. So if you have only keys for this fee payer role, then you can just use um, 
uh, you can pay transfer fee only. If you are uh, transfer value, then you need to know, you need to have the keys for uh, transfer world. Now let's talk about uh, transfer model. Uh, similar to the account model, uh, Ethereum does not have Thai information on uh, transfer, uh, transfer model. But it has three functions, real transfer, smart contract deploy, and smart contract execution. Uh, in our crypto uh, transaction, we uh, introduced four uh, more fields. First one is sender address. This is uh, required to, uh, due to the uh, change of private key. So we should explicitly specify the sender address. And uh, on the platform level, we provide a uh, uh, multi mechanism. The sender signatures can have multiple signatures. And also, P payer address and P payer signatures are related to uh, the fee deletion mechanism, but they are not required for all transaction types. This slide shows the Ethereum uh, transaction verification mechanism. As you can see, we can get our signatures from the transaction, and then you can get public key from the signature, and you can get the address from the public key. But in Clayton, we uh, change it uh, account model and transaction model. We should some more uh, tasks to verify the transaction. So for the Ethereum transactions, we can use the same mechanism, but for other newly introduced uh, transaction types, we can follow the right hand style. So we can get signature from the transaction and we can get public key from the signature. So we can get public key from the left side and we can get account key from the uh, sender address of the transaction. So we get two uh, public keys. And you can compare both keys and if they are matched, then you can say that uh, this is a valid transaction. If they are not matched, then you can say that uh, the transaction is invalid. Uh, this slide shows two examples of our uh, transaction types. Left one, left, one, left one shows a value transfer and right one shows fee delegate value transfer. And value transfer transaction does not have fee delegation mechanism, so it does not have to have a fee payer address and fee payer signatures. So when we execute a value transfer transaction, uh, the transaction fee will be charged by a charge to the sender address and the amount of tokens will be transferred from sender address to the recipient. And when you execute the fee delegate value transfer, the transaction fee will be uh, charged to the fee payer and uh, the amount of tokens will be transferred from the sender address to the recipient. And this slide shows uh, some of our uh, collection transaction types. And the second column shows uh, basic transaction types, which has no fee delegation. And the third column shows fee delegation transaction types, uh, which uh, provides fee delegation mechanism. And each row shows uh, different functionalities. First one is leverage transaction. This is provided for compatibility. So all Ethereum transactions will be mapped to this leverage transaction. And those functions are uh, also provided uh, in Ethereum, but we separate transaction types. And we also have new functions such as account update and so on. So if you are more, uh, if you are interested in the transaction types, you can find more information in our documentation site. And let's talk about the performance. In this chart, on the x-axis it shows uh, the functionalities value transfer, smart contract deploy, and smart contract execution. And the y-axis shows the uh, relative execution time over legacy. As you can see, uh, our new transaction type performs sl slightly slower than the legacy. It means uh, Ethereum transaction less than about uh, 10%. This is due to the double encoding and transaction verification. But we have more benefits. First one is uh, usability enhancement, which means we uh, provide a uh, change of priority key and multi C mechanism and robust key, so uh, there are much more usability enhancement. And due to the uh, uh, type information, we can pass through to other undiscovered needs. So if we have more uh, 
types or functions required in the future, we can easily uh, implement those kind of types without incurring severe hardcore. And we also got a uh, search reduction. At the time when we get the data, we, uh, as of September of this year, we found that, that there are 75 billion users, billion accounts in Ethereum. So if we have a uh, high information into that, then we get one byte overhead for all accounts. This takes uh, 75 megabytes, but we can reduce uh, 64 bytes for EOAs. As you can see, we use uh, uh, root, and, root and code hash for those that uh, takes uh, 64 bytes. If we uh, assume that EOAs takes uh, many percent of to total Ethereum account, then we can reduce uh, 3.8 gigabytes of storage cost. You can see this is obvious. We can get much more storage reduction. So let's summarize my presentation. We found uh, several usability limitations, uh, such as uh, the immutable private key and the multi scheme mechanism and so on. And we uh, find solutions by extending uh, account model and transaction model. Also, due to the change of these kind of models, uh, we should uh, change the transaction verification mechanism, which changes slightly overhead compared to the Ethereum. But we get a uh, trade off. There's a slightly um, negligible performance degradation, but we can get more benefits of uh, improved usability and extensibility, and we also reduce uh, search cost. So I hope that uh, this uh, extension and this uh, new uh, models can be applicable to other Ethereum compatible blockchains or Ethereum itself. Okay, uh, we always welcome to uh, contribute our open source project Clayton. As you can see, you, find, you can check out our source code in the GitHub side, and you can also find some more information about Clayton in the documentation side. And you can see the right hand side, there's a QR code. I don't know what it is, but the organizer should uh, wanted to attach it in the last slide. And you can find uh, my email address. If you have any more questions, then please ask me via this uh, email address. Uh, the second thing. Uh, uh, another thing I'll talk about is that there's some uh, plated stickers and uh, bags uh, just in front of the entry. You can, if you're interested in it, you can take some of okay. them. Okay. Thank you for receiving my presentation.